Hi, I'm Vanessa Joy, and we are going to talk a little bit about pricing and packaging. The goal of this very short video is for you to be able to overview your own pricing and packaging to make sure that it's making you a profit. We do not want to be starving artists. We want to know how to put food on our tables as well as live our passion in photography. So here we go. When it comes to pricing and packaging, the first thing that you want to do is do your research. You need to be firm. You need to know what you're worth when it comes to photography. You are absolutely worth charging a good amount of money. Make sure that you keep it simple. As far as pricing and packaging goes, you don't want a ton of options. They will just confuse your clients. So three to five packages is usually ideal when creating a pricing structure for your photography. And finally, know whether you want to have a boutique type studio or a volume type studio. Both of these are going to have very different packaging structures. A boutique studio tends to be lower volume, taking less weddings a year, typically I would say 30 on average, and charging a higher premium for them. Whereas a volume studio would be doing maybe 50, 60, 100 weddings a year and able to charge a lower amount on their packages because they are doing volume. I want to talk to you guys about how to get your clients to spend money. Number one, tell your clients which package to book. And the way that you do this is by, first of all, listing your highest package first. When you list your highest package first, it's going to be very psychologically inclined. They're going to see your highest package, potentially be shocked over it, but then the rest of your packages are going to seem so much more reasonable when you're listing them off to them. So it's a way to psychologically make them feel more comfortable with your pricing as you're introducing your packaging to them. Secondly, you want to make sure that you are listing your most popular package. So what I like to do is when I email them my pricing ahead of the consultation, I tell them, hey, collection C is my most popular package. I'm doing this because I am guiding them to a typical package that I want them to book. My collection C is the average package that I book. It's an $8,500 package, full day coverage, engagement session, wedding album, and engagement album. Next, you want to make sure that you are giving them what they want in a package. There's no use in trying to fight with your clients. If you know that your clients are going to want full day coverage, a wedding album, and an engagement session, then make sure you have a package with those things in it. Don't make it your lowest package though, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. You wanna make sure that you give incentives for booking a higher package. So don't go ahead and put everything, the, you know, throw the whole farm into the lowest package because why wouldn't they just book the lowest package? Make sure the things that they want like a wedding album or maybe high res files are only in your top collections so that they're an incentive or a pull through for them to book your higher collections. Finally, make sure that you do have an a la carte price list. Price list that will show that if they book with a package, rather than just adding everything on afterwards, they will, they will save money. Now we're going to get into some math. <laughs> Not my favorite thing, but you really do need to know the dollars and cents when it comes to structuring your pricing and packaging. I can tell you how to package all of your collections, but it's not gonna do very much for you if you're not pricing them correctly. Number one, you want to make sure that you are pricing everything according to your cost of sales. Approximately one third to one fifth of your gross income or your package price should be cost of sales. This includes everything to run your business, everything from your second shooter, your album costs, to what it costs you for liability insurance, equipment insurance, different subscription things that you have like gallery hosting online. Your higher packages should absolutely earn you more profit. Why? Because they're costing you more time to create and your time is worth something and you need to charge for it and make a profit for it. Figure how much you want to be paid per hour, including all the time spent with the bride on production as well as the wedding day. So roughly, this is about 40 hours, 40 to 50 hours per bride. Everything from that initial email when she contacts you to the last contact that you have with her, maybe giving her her wedding album. All of that is included in the time that you are spending with each individual client.
So here's where the visuals kick in and making money on every package. You want to make sure that you know the cost of running your business. This will vary here and there depending on where you are in the world. But to start off, I do have some average pricing here so you can get an idea of how this works. $3,000 approximately per year is spent on equipment and education. $800 on liability and equipment insurance. $250 online proofing or backup systems. $1,500 on average is spent on advertising per year. $800 on website, blog hosting, internet costs. You also have additional or optional expenses. Maybe you have a studio space that costs you roughly $7,800 per year, as well as gas. Um, you can actually go to fueleconomy.gov forward slash trip and probably about $900 per year. So if you average about 30 weddings with these prices right here, your average cost per job of running the business is $250 per job. So moving along to the cost of production. So second photographers, again, this is an average and will vary, but they usually cost around $400 per job. Your post-production costs, this is your editing or anything else that you're doing to the photos, about $200 per job. Album design, $200 per job. Printing the actual album, $450. A DVD or flash drive that you're handing off to your client with the files on it, $20. Bucks. And all of this equals about $1,300 per job. So if you're looking at the cost of running the business, $250 per job. Cost of production, $1,300 per job. Those are your totals. So just to shoot a wedding, it is actually costing you about $1,500. Let's just say you want to make $50 an hour. $50 times 40 hours of the time that you're spending per wedding is $2,000. So to make $50 an hour, you need to take home $2,000 from each wedding after your cost of sales. And don't forget that income tax is roughly 20 to 30%. So $2,000 per wedding is really about $1,400 per wedding after taxes or $35 an hour. So we know to make $50 an hour, let's just say $2,000 profit per job. So we have our cost of sales. We have, we know $2,000 profit per job. Let's just say that we want to work 30 weddings a year. So let's add that cost and profit to our base package there, and we have $3,500 package. We create a gross income equation, $3,500 times 30, $106,000. Now right here, this is where it's kind of fun. A lot of people will look at $106,000 coming in in checks and think, yes, I'm rich. Nope, you're not. Because most of this money, you are simply a steward of. It's not actually your money. If we figure out what your net income actually is, taking away your cost of sales, it's only $60,000. It's actually only $42,000 after taxes. So you need to be charging $3,500 for an average wedding package in order to make $60,000 per year. And that's only $42,000 after taxes. And it's important to know that because at the end of the year, you have to write out that check, $18,000 to the government, and you wanna make sure you haven't already spent that money. I'm going to leave you with the best pricing advice that I can. Someone once told this to me, and I wish I had written down who it was because I would thank them as to how wonderfully this has worked for my business. Anytime somebody books your highest package, raise your prices. There were times where I raised my prices four or five times in one year. Because if they've booked your highest package, they would have paid more. So anytime someone books your highest package, raise your prices, even if it's little baby steps, by $100, $200, $500, whatever it is. And it will help you slowly raise your prices and get to the point where you are creating a sustainable income from your photography business. I hope this bit of pricing advice has helped you and will help you revamp or validate the pricing structure that you currently have. I will talk to you next time.